and at number 10, Pete Davidson and Kanye West. So we all assumed that these two must hate each other, but we got confirmation of this when Kanye shared private screenshots between him and Pete on Instagram. After Kanye had attacked both Kim and Pete online for weeks now, Pete finally decided to stand up for himself and Kim and tried to talk to Kanye man to man about the situation. Leaked text showed Pete telling Kanye, quote, Yo, it's Skeet. Can you please take a second and calm down? It's 8 a.m. It don't gotta be like this. Kim is literally the best mother I've ever met. What she does for those kids is amazing and you're so effing lucky that she's your kid's mom. I've decided I'm not gonna let you treat us this way anymore and I'm done being quiet. Kanye then responded, Oh, so you're using profanity now? Where are you right now? Pete then pulled something nobody would have expected and responded by sharing a selfie of him in bed, then writing, In bed with your wife. It's clear that this feud is most likely only going to get messier until Kanye and Kim are officially divorced. In at number 9, Scott Disick and Kourtney Kardashian. Scott Disick was savagely exposed in 2021 for being a jealous ex. It was pretty clear to fans of Keeping Up with the Kardashians that Scott was never over Kourtney since their split, but it was made clear when private DMs leaked that showed that Scott was trashing Kourtney's new relationship with Travis Barker. After paparazzi photos showed Kourtney and Travis showing tons of PDL while on a trip to Italy, Scott DMed Eunice Benjima, another one of Kourtney's ex-boyfriends who isn't even close with him or the family, and wrote, quote, Yo, is this chick okay? Bro, like, what is this? In the middle of Italy? Clearly trying to initiate a conversation where they both trash Courtney. But to everyone's surprise, even though it seems that Courtney and Eunice ended things badly, Eunice did not trash Courtney, and he responded, quote, Doesn't matter to me as long as she's happy. P.S. I ain't your bro. Eunice shared this whole conversation publicly, so it made things even more awkward between Scott and Courtney. Shortly after this, Scott's girlfriend at the time, Amelia Hamlin, dumped him, and now Travis and Courtney are madly in love and engaged. And at number 8, Blake Lively and Anna Kendrick. Blake Lively and Anna Kendrick starred in the hit movie A Simple Favor together, and it's long been rumored that during the filming of that movie, the women hated each other. The feud was so bad that the studio executives had to get involved and mediate the tension between the women. In a TikTok, the page Celebrity Memoir Book Club claimed that when filming wrapped on the movie, Lively and Kendrick were not speaking. Adding quote, they were basically enemies and their press tours had to be booked separately. The page even shared a private DM they received, showing a studio exec at Lionsgate confirming basically everything the previous post said. This DM read, quote, They hated each other. The studio even had to have a talk with them about making it look like they liked each other on press tours because it was starting to get obvious. Anna in particular was really competitive with Blake and was constantly asking to make sure she got more promotion than Blake and even made us photoshop her cleavage in the simple favor poster to be as big or bigger than Blake's. So from this comment, it seems that Anna Kendrick might have been the reason for this feud, but either way, it was nasty. At number seven, Addison Rae and Bryce Hall. Two of TikTok's biggest stars and former power couple Addison Rae and Bryce Hall have been feuding with each other ever since their messy breakup just a few weeks ago. In March of this year, there were reports that the couple had split up for the second time after their relationship was bombarded with cheating rumors and scandals. These rumors first came about during a Zoom call with some of her fans where Addison revealed that she and Bryce had been fighting and so these rumors got off the ground and started circulating. Shortly after that, Addison made a cryptic Instagram post about how she wanted to keep some of the things she's dealing with away from the public eye. There was some speculation that this had something to do with Bryce, and this theory was embraced by more followers as they started to notice that some of Bryce and Addison's couple pictures had been removed from social media. Later, their breakup was finally addressed with a simple confirmation of their split. We don't know why they broke up or if the cheating rumors are true, but they are on and off again, so their feuding and fighting may only last a short amount of time. But we shall see. In at number six, Abby Shake, Shake, Chatterjee, and Nick Lachey. This is a strange one, but the Love Is Blind cast member Shake got in a feud with the host of the show, Nick Lachey. Shake got in trouble for focusing too much on the appearance of his partner and claiming that he was not attracted to her. Things got heated at the reunion when Shake said attraction was about quote nature and saying that they're animals. Lachey fired back at the veterinarian saying, quote, no, you treat animals. We're human beings. There's a big difference. Shake then slammed Nick in a post on Instagram, writing, quote, you put a doctor on the show. Of course, you're going to see some critical thinking. Speaking of which, Nick Lachey, you're a massive twerp. For your comment dragging vets, you do realize that becoming a veterinarian is considerably more difficult than becoming a human doctor, right? He also slammed the host for not being impartial like a host should be. At number five, Winston Marshall. Sometimes the most devastating feuds are the ones between friends. The banjoist from the band Mumford & Sons, Winston Marshall, faced cancellation recently after he was called out for praising a book that, quote, condemns the destructive rise of Antifa. 
and this drama caused a huge rift and feud between him and the other members of the band. This all went down after he tweeted the author of the book calling him a brave man for publishing this book and praising its content and views. As a result, tensions rose within the band because other members just couldn't get behind Winston's ideals. A source close to the band says that this bombshell greatly impacted the band, creating tension within the group. Things got so tense that an emergency band meeting was called where they discussed the matter and came to the conclusion that Marshall needed to take a step back. It was then announced that Marshall would be leaving the band and would be using his time off to quote, examine his blind spots. After facing this backlash and being kicked out of the band, Marshall tweeted a series of apologies to everyone that he offended, saying that he understands that people, including many of his bandmates, have been hurt by his comments, and also saying quote, for now, please know that I realize how my endorsements have the potential to be viewed as approvals of hateful, divisive behavior. I apologize as this was not my intention. Not much has been heard from him or the band on the matter but no one really knows if he'll ever be welcomed back in the future. In at number 4, Nicki Minaj and Miley Cyrus Nicki Minaj had everyone on edge when she took the time during her 2015 VMA acceptance speech to call out host Miley Cyrus. The call it was because Miley made some negative comments about her in the press. While accepting the award for best hip hop video at the MTV VMAs, Nicki Minaj finished it off by saying quote, and now back to this bee that had a lot to say about me in the press the other day, Miley what's good. Miley actually handled it very well and quickly congratulated Nikki on the win and said the media twisted her words. Miley's original comments were relating to Nikki's feud with Taylor Swift. In that interview, Miley called out Nikki for not being very nice, which I guess she kind of proved at this award show. But can you imagine me called out live like that? Miley is my hero for settling it like a champ. At number three, Prince Harry and Prince William. One of the biggest feuds on this list is one that I briefly mentioned before. Prince Harry and Prince William have been feuding for years, but with his exit from the royal family as well as his bombshell interview with Oprah, things may have gotten even more tense. The brothers have always had a strained relationship even when growing up. It is said that William adopted a more serious attitude, being the one destined for the throne, and Harry was more laid back and carefree. These two personalities apparently clashed a lot growing up and remains difficult to this day. Now with the added strain on the family following Harry and Meghan's interview, William is reportedly furious with his brother. According to sources, William is struggling to hold back his side of the story as the Queen has said that they would be handling the situation privately. Sources say that William is looking to defend his wife Kate as well as clear up any rumors surrounding racial allegations within the family. Harry and William haven't spoken in a long time according to sources and I don't really think they will be anytime soon. In at number 2, Drake and Pusha T This feud is so messy, it started all the way back in 2011, and some could say it's still not over. It all started when Drake released the song Dreams Money Can Buy in 2011, with verses that many thought contained disses aimed at Pusha T. This started a flood of diss tracks between the two, with both rappers taking clear shots at the other. The two kept trading diss tracks for a few years until 2018, when Pusha T released the single Infrared, which allegedly accused Drake of not writing his own raps. Even though many on Drake's team have denied this, the rumor stuck, and many people to this day still claim that that Drake has ghostwriters. But it did not stop. The biggest hit to Drake's rep came from the next diss track, The Story of Adidon, which not only accused Drake of having a secret child, but the cover art also showed young Drake in as of now, the feud has settled and the pair no longer make diss tracks about one another, but I'm sure there's still a lot of tension. And finally, at number one, Kim Cattrall and Sarah Jessica Parker. As a huge fan of Sex and the City, this feud hurts my heart and I really wish they could have made up so Samantha would have been in the reboot. Probably would have made it a lot better. Rumors of tension between the women didn't start until the show ended, and Parker shaded Cattrall by saying she was the reason the third Sex and the City movie was not made. Later on, rumors swirled that the movie was scrapped just days before filming due to Kim Cattrall's refusal to sign on unless Warner Brothers produced other projects that she had in development. Later on in an interview, Kim said that SJP, quote, really could have been nicer about everything, hinting a tension between them. But things were turned up a notch when Cottrell's brother passed away in 2018, and Parker shared her condolences on Instagram. Kim Cottrell did not like this seemingly fake response and clapped back, quote, you are not my family, you are not my friend. So I'm ready to tell you one last time to stop exploiting our tragedy in order to restore your nice girl persona. As of now, the feud is clearly not resolved and the tension is why Samantha is is not in the HBO Max reboot and just like that. At number 10, Sweetie and Quavo. Singer Sweetie and rapper Quavo recently announced their breakup and it was kind of messy. It first started with a simple heads up tweet from Sweetie telling her followers that they had broken up, but shortly after, footage was leaked which showed the former couple fighting in an elevator. Though this footage was from a year ago, it gave people a look at how their relationship was at the time. Their feuding was only now brought to light as they were sort of exposed for being toxic. 
Both Saweetie and Quavo have said that they've moved on from this incident, and Quavo clarifies that he never abused his girlfriend. Their breakup has caused some feuding within Quavo's family as well, making this an all-around unfortunate and toxic time for them. At number 9, Cardi B and Candace Owens. Just when we thought the WAP controversy was over, in walks Candace Owens to rehash it. After performing the song live at the Grammys, Cardi B was faced with WAP backlash again as Candace called her out for the imagery of the song and performance. She appeared on Fox News discussing the performance and calling it a quote, attack on American values, saying that it was weakening American society and that the dancers that night were quote, actively trying to make children aspire to things that are grotesque, end quote. This led to both women feuding on Twitter, taking jabs at one another, and really just making for a very toxic environment. Things could have just ended there, but then lawsuits became a threat. Candace tweeted saying that she would be suiting Cardi over alleged screenshots that were shared, and Cardi threatened to countersue. There haven't really been many developments since then, but I hope that this online feud does not make it to the courts. Now before I go any further, I would like to ask you guys to consider leaving a like on this video and also check out my gaming channel Viper Girl if you're looking for some extra content to enjoy. I'm number 8, Lil Nas X and Candace Owen. Candace Owens really is out here feuding with everyone because she's not only fighting with Cardi, but she also has it out for Lil Nas X as well. Nas has been in the news recently for the backlash surrounding the satanic imagery from his Montero music video, and in response, Candace said that people like Nas are what's quote, keeping black America behind. When the singer saw what Candace had been saying about him, he clapped back at her calling her a flop and reminding her how successful his music really is. In return, Candace tweeted saying, quote, Yes, you successfully got used by corporations to help further destroy our youth. Congratulations on being a pawn in a game that you don't likely understand. We can take cheap shots on Twitter or I can welcome you to have this discussion with me publicly because it matters, end quote. Candace is a very outspoken person, so it's not surprising that a feud like this would come about, but fans are still defending Nas no matter what, and the singer doesn't really seem to care about her opinion anyway. In at number 7, Ariana Grande and Victoria Justice. These ladies have allegedly been feuding since they were teens, filming Nickelodeon's Victorious. The most notable moment that alluded to a feud happened during an interview with the four female leads of Victorious, which featured Grande, Justice, Liz Gillies, and Daniela Monet. During the Popstar Magazine interview video, the cast members played a game where they said things about one another that fans might might not know. During this interview, Gillies gushed about Grande's singing voice, telling the publication, quote, She sings everything, and it's a good thing because she has a beautiful voice, but it's awesome. She sings absolutely everything. She never stops. When other members of the cast agreed, Justice looked annoyed and interrupted the conversation by saying, quote, I think we all sing a lot, while appearing to roll her eyes, which is obviously downplaying the compliment that was supposed to be for Ariana. Years later, Ariana threw some more shade by claiming Victorious ended because one girl did not want to do it anymore. She instead wanted a solo tour, and since Justice went on a solo tour after the show ended, it was clearly about her. However, both women claim there is no beef, although many don't believe it. At number 6, Clarissa Shields and Jake Paul In my last Celebrity Feud video, I mentioned Jake Paul and his feud with Conor McGregor, but now there seems to be a new feud going on in the boxing world between Jake Paul and Clarissa Shields. It's again a little more one-sided, but a feud is a feud and Jake is surprisingly not the one who started it. In a recent interview, Clarissa had some harsh words for Jake and his brother as she called them out for not being real boxers. In the interview, she said, quote, I think Jake Paul and his brother are more like clown shows, to be honest. But they're making money, they're using their platforms, but it's not real boxing, end quote. Carissa also said that she could easily take Jake in a fight as she said, quote, I would whoop Jake Paul's ass though just because he thinks boxing is easy. Clarissa is an Olympic level athlete and Jake is a YouTuber, so I think when it comes to a fight, I'm on team Clarissa. Jake has not yet responded to her comments, but I honestly wouldn't put it past him. At number 5, Bad Baby and Dr. Phil. If you're a fan of the show Dr. Phil, then you may be familiar with Danielle Bergoli, aka the Cash Me Outside Girl. Danielle, now known as rapper Bad Baby, was on the show because her mother was struggling to help her with her behavioral issues. As a result of her time on the show, Dr. Phil referred Danielle to a reform camp of sorts called Turnabout Ranch. The ranch is supposed to be a teen residential facility where they rehabilitate troubled teens. Well, recently, Danielle came out to talk about her experiences at the ranch, recounting the abuse that she endured there and calling Dr. Phil out on recommending such a horrific place. The rapper claimed that she was apprehended by workers in the middle of the night, taken from her home and transported to the ranch where she was forced to stay awake for three days. 
She also spoke out about the facility's use of restraints on teens in attendance and how many other attendees cited many instances of abuse while at the ranch. Danielle spoke out about her experiences in her YouTube video and she spoke directly to Dr. Phil condemning his support for such a place and warned him that if he doesn't take accountability that she would quote, handle things her way. As of right now, Dr. Phil has yet to comment on the situation but I'm sure that Danielle is planning her fight for justice. At number 4, Jojo Siwa and a baby. A couple of weeks ago, the internet had a wait, what kind of moment, as there was seemingly a feud going on between Jojo Siwa and rapper The Baby. It all started when the rapper released his song Beatbox Freestyle, in which he says the lyrics, You a B, Jojo Siwa. B, as in the B word we're not allowed to say on YouTube. People were very confused because it seemed like there was some drama going on between the dancer and the rapper because no one would just start a feud for no reason, right? Fans were left wondering what JoJo did to leave the baby so mad like that. JoJo Siwa feud started trending as people tried to scour the internet looking for the spark that started this flame. Some fans from both sides even started fighting because of this supposed feud. Well, it turned out that there was absolutely no beef whatsoever and people just got mad for no reason, but that's the internet and that kind of happens a lot. The rapper cleared things up when he clarified that he was talking about himself in the song. Since his real name is Jonathan, Jojo for short, and Siwa was interpreted as a twist on CY, that's why he mentioned the YouTuber in the song. To further clarify things, he tweeted Jojo saying, quote, my three-year-old princess is your number one fan. Don't let them trick you into ever thinking I have a problem with you. My wordplay just went over their heads. All love on my end, shorty. Quote. In at number three, Solange and Jay Z. This 2014 elevator incident is one of the most legendary of all time because it shows never to mess with the Knowles family. After the Met Gala in 2014, Jay Z, Beyonce, and Solange stepped into an elevator. And when Solange thought nobody else was watching, she started to attack Jay Z, hitting him with her hands and purse multiple times while Beyonce just stood there and watched, making it clear that whatever she was doing was supported by his wife, Beyonce. After Beyonce admitted that Jay cheated on her album, Lemonade, it's clear that this is when Solange found out about the cheating and that's how she decided to take out her anger. Jay-Z opened up about the incident in 2017, saying he and Solange are totally fine now and he views her as his sister. So thankfully this incident did not cause long-term damage. At number two, Kim Kardashian and Kanye West. With the recent divorce announcement from Kim Kardashian and Kanye West, we're beginning to see how their marriage cracked and crumbled, and how things are now. Though they had been putting on a brave face for a long time, it turns out that they had been feuding a lot. Things got so bad that they felt that their relationship was crumbling towards the end of last year, and they made the decision to seek different living arrangements, spending some time apart as a result of the quote, downright toxicity in their marriage. The hope was to find a way to make things work, especially for their kids' sake, but according to sources, it reached a point where quote, bickering turned into nasty blowups and confrontations. They tried to take some time apart as to not expose their kids to this kind of negativity, but their constant feuding became too much to handle. After Kanye reported reportedly blew up at Kim during a recent argument, they were never able to patch things up after that and so they filed for divorce. Though they're trying to keep their divorces as private as possible, the Kardashians' testimonies on their show, as well as many sources coming forward, is making it kind of hard for their divorce to remain quiet. They're in a constant feud now as they separate themselves from each other, but I hope things don't get too chaotic for them. And finally at number one, Piers Morgan and Meghan Markle. Even though it's been several weeks since Meghan Markle and Prince Harry's bombshell interview, news sources are still talking about it, and there's one person in particular who just won't let it go. Pierce Morgan has been very vocal about their whole interview, especially regarding the things that Meghan had said. Though there has been a lot of scrutiny from many sides, Pierce is almost the number one person to go to for Meghan Markle scrutiny. It's gotten to the point where you could call it a feud, even though it's more one-sided. Though in recent weeks, their feuding has been about the things that Meghan said in the interview, like her comments on her mental health. Apparently, this hate goes much deeper. Pierce has been outspoken about Meghan ever since she ghosted him in 2016. After that, he's been talking about how she was, quote, prepared to cut people. He would make comments about her family and about her and Prince Harry's decision to leave the royal family, calling them, quote, the world's most tone-deaf, hypocritical, narcissistic, deluded, whiny brats. During the Oprah interview, Meghan opened up about her mental health, saying that there was once a point after marrying into the royal family that she wanted to take her own life, and Pierce spoke out about this on Good Morning Britain and said that he, quote, 
didn't believe a word she said. After Pierce made those comments, he started to face backlash as people condemned his comments on Meghan's mental health. Even though he's faced scrutiny, he refuses to take back anything he said, adding to this heated one-side feud with her. At number 10, The Weeknd and the Grammys. The Grammys are one of the most prestigious awards in the music industry. Pretty much every artist dreams of one day receiving one, and they probably don't want to put their chances of receiving one in jeopardy. One artist, however, isn't interested in being on the Grammys good side and would rather fight them than be friends. Singer The Weeknd announced that he would be boycotting the Grammys for the foreseeable future due to the unfairness of the awards. It's alleged that there are secret committees within the Academy who decide who gets nominated and who wins awards, and this has been the subject of a feud between The Weeknd and the Grammys. These allegations stem from the revelations made by former chief executive Deborah Duggan, who filed a 44-page complaint about the Grammys where she cited, quote, The Grammys voting process is ripe with corruption. Members of the board of trustees and the secret committees choose artists with whom they have personal or business relationships, end quote. After his 2020 song Blinding Lights was snubbed of any nominations, The Weeknd blamed the alleged corruption for his snub, and he and the Academy have been in a war of words, so to speak, ever since. Other than the allegations of corruption within the Academy, The Weeknd also alleges that he was locked out of Grammy nominations because he decided to perform at the Super Bowl. Because of this music conspiracy, the singer released a statement in March of this year that read, quote, Because of the secret committees, I will no longer allow my label to submit my music to the Grammys, end quote. At number 9, James Charles and Asian Doll. It's a little embarrassing for celebrities to get dragged online for something as petty as a Twitter feud. Like, imagine trying to clap back at someone just for them to clap back even harder, leaving the internet laughing at you. This is pretty much what happened between James Charles and rapper Asian Doll. It all started when the rapper tweeted out about makeup artist prices, where she said, quote, if you charge over $150 to do a face of makeup, then you can go to hell respectively. James saw this tweet and it frustrated him a bit to the point where he felt the need to respond saying quote what a stupid tweet one foundation can cost fifty dollars artists have to buy every shade for their kit and that's just the first step it's expensive to work as a makeup artist either pay an artist rate for their time and skill or do it yourself or get it done at a counter and risk looking busted end quote asian doll saw his reply and basically clapped back with a nobody asked you sort of message where she basically made a dig at his flashback mary look the rapper tweeted saying quote what a dumbass to be in my business replying to something that has absolutely nothing to do with you. I'm having a debate about hood prices, baby. Stay over there in Hollywood where they have you looking like a ghost, end quote. This little Twitter feud had fans laughing and memeing the whole situation and criticized James for even jumping into the conversation in the first place. Now before carrying on the list, I'd like to ask you guys to consider leaving a like on this video if you're enjoying it so far and also check out my gaming channel, Viper Girl, and hit that subscribe button while you're there. At number eight, Meghan Markle and Kate Middleton. After their bombshell Oprah interview, Meghan Markle and Prince Harry have been scrutinized for a lot of what they spoke about. One of the biggest things people are talking about in regards to their interview is their relationship with the rest of their family. According to sources, the most strained relationships are those between Meghan Markle and Kate Middleton, as well as Prince Harry and his brother William. Meghan and Kate have reportedly been on poor terms for a long time, with some sources saying that they haven't spoken to each other in over a year. During the interview, Meghan addressed the public's view on her feud with Kate over Princess Charlotte's dress at Meghan Meghan's wedding, saying that Kate made her cry over it. Though they eventually patched things up and Kate apologized, they haven't been on speaking terms, not because of anything personal, but because of the feud between their husbands. There doesn't seem to be a lot of hate between Meg and Kate, but there seems to be a lot of tension since their partners aren't on good terms with each other. A source explained Meghan and Kate's situation in a statement saying, quote, there is real animosity that the brothers have towards one another, and that has spilled over to Meghan and Kate's relationship, making it very hard for them to be friends or even friendly, end quote. Hopefully they can one day patch things up for the sake of being rid of this negative energy. At number seven, Khloe Kardashian and the internet. Now this may not be the biggest feud ever, there, but it is definitely strange. Recently, Chloe found herself in a bit of a scandal after an unedited photo of her was accidentally posted to social media. The post was quickly circulated on the internet before being taken down, and Chloe has been trying to cover it all up since. She says that she's insecure about that photo because of how she's portrayed, and that she blames the internet and social media for the way that she sees herself, as she always has to look perfect. She's so serious about blocking this image from people that she's saying that she has every right to issue a lawsuit in order to get it taken down from the internet. Now she's feuding with the internet to take back this photo, as well as fans, because she blames them for the whole thing, saying that their pressures of the ideal appearance is what's leading her to such extreme lengths. 
At number six, Tana Mojo and Cole Kerrigan. Influencers Tana Mojo and Cole Kerrigan have been caught in a feud after Cole alleged that Tana hacked his social media accounts and tried to sue him for $100,000. It all started when Cole put Tana on blast by sharing a screenshot of a cease and desist text allegedly sent by Tana's lawyer. The text essentially warned Cole that he was in violation of a contract he had signed with Tana and that a breach of contract would subject him to pay $100,000. The contract is alleged that Tana has her circle of friends sign a non-disclosure agreement each year, and so now Cole is in trouble after one of his social media posts violated the terms of said contract. Now on top of this lawsuit, Cole also claims that Tana hired someone to hack his social media accounts, where they were able to delete a number of accounts like his YouTube channel and Twitter account. Cole claims that all of this drama is because he is one of the only people that Tana knows who isn't afraid to speak out about her. Cole has also claimed that Tana has kicked him out of her house, used him for free makeup services, and would even go through his personal belongings when he wasn't home. There haven't been many updates on this feud, but I'm sure that this is far from over. Halfway number five, Chloe Grace Moretz and Chloe and Kim Kardashian. During Kim and Kanye's 2016 feud with Taylor Swift, Chloe Grace Moretz got involved and Chloe Kardashian took a nasty low below. After Kim released a video on Snapchat of Kanye West discussing his famous song with Taylor, Chloe Grace Moretz tweeted to defend Swift from the accusation that she lied about not knowing about the song before it was released. Moretz said, quote, Stop wasting your voice on something so petulant and unimportant. Everyone in this industry needs to get their heads out of a hole and look around to realize what's actually happening in the real world. Then Khloe Kardashian jumped in to defend her sister Kim, tweeting back quote, is this the hole you're referring to? Khloe Grace Moretz. Then adding a picture that seemingly showed Moretz's bare Moretz clapped back that the girl in the photo was not her, and tons of celebrities came to Moretz's defense against this nasty clapback. Kim also tweeted that nobody had any idea who Chloe Grace Moretz was. Yikes. At number four, Sabrina Carpenter and Olivia Rodrigo. One of the hottest songs out there right now is Driver's License by Olivia Rodrigo, and though it is seen as the breakup anthem of 2021, it's also got a huge backstory and a huge feud surrounding it. Essentially, Olivia wrote Driver's License after her breakup with her high school musical, the musical of the series, co-star Joshua Bassett. Apparently, this was a very messy breakup that turned into a very messy love triangle after actress Sabrina Carpenter was brought into the mix and started dating Joshua. Are you following? Okay, so Olivia releases a song with a few nods to Joshua's new relationship with Sabrina. Next, in response to Olivia's song, Joshua releases a few songs of his own, including one called Lie Lie Lie. And then, Sabrina released a song of her own that included references to Olivia as the song was about getting into a new relationship while an ex watches on. Now, no one is saying anything directly, and it is a very read between the lines kind of situation, but it's still very messy and fans are obsessed. It could all be for PR, or maybe not, but it is certainly a very juicy story. At number three, Joe Rogan and Trisha Paytas. Trisha Paytas feuding with someone really isn't a new thing. I mean, she has a new beef with someone every week, but this time around, she's feuding with someone that I honestly wasn't expecting. Comedian and podcaster Joe Rogan is next up to square up with Trisha Paytas, and it's all because of some comments that he made about her on his podcast about Trisha's appearance. On a recent episode of his podcast, Joe and guest Ali Makovsky were discussing Trisha Paytas and her OnlyFans, and when he was shown a photo of her in a bikini for reference, he quipped saying, quote, you can keep that. Well, Trisha caught wind of his comment and came firing back. She decided to clap back at Joe, saying that he had small pee, pee energy, and also went on to say, quote, there's a lot to come for me for, but to look at a photo of me in a bikini going, ugh, you can keep that, why? I've heard Joe Rogan is highly intelligent. Honestly, I look at that and I'm like, he has no intellect whatsoever. He can't come up with a wittier quip, and if you know I'm not your type, you don't have to say anything. End quote. People thought it was uncalled for for Joe to make comments about Trisha's appearance, but what do you guys think? Joe is probably now on Trisha's radar, and I'm sure this won't be the last we hear from their feud. At number two, Sharon Osbourne and Cheryl Underwood. After becoming friends on The View, Sharon Osbourne and Cheryl Underwood are now feuding with each other after they got into a very heated argument surrounding Piers Morgan's remarks about Meghan Markle. Sharon backed up Piers' comments about Meghan Markle's mental health and this frustrated Cheryl. The two got into a very heated debate that ended with Sharon in tears, but this also sparked a conversation about Sharon's ideals. She was called a racist, and a number of other accusations came out about how she has used various slurs in the past when talking 
talking about her other co-hosts. As a result of this, Sharon was fired from the show and an internal investigation was launched. Cheryl said that she and Sharon were good friends, but because of this feud, they haven't spoken to each other. Sharon said that she tried sending Cheryl a apology text, but it went unanswered. We don't know if they'll make up, but it might be too soon to tell. And finally, at number one, Conor McGregor and Jake Paul. Now I'm gonna keep this one short and sweet because there is just so much pettiness and I can't handle it. Basically, there is a one-sided feud between Conor McGregor and Jake Paul. Jake wants to fight Conor and Conor's like, Meh. Jake has been seen all over social media antagonizing, posting videos, and calling him names, and even bribing the guy with a $50 million check. Really, it's very childish, playground type drama that no one besides Jake really has the time for. After all his antagonizing, nothing really ever came of it. Connor hasn't fought Jake and probably never will because of how annoying he is. 